we're looking at the humerus. The humerus has three different names. We can refer to this as the humerus, the brachium, or the arm. Now just remember that the arm in the upper extremity is the most proximal part of the appendage. In other words, this is where it's going to attach into the shoulder. Um, however, in the lower extremity, the leg, the leg is actually the distal. It's between the knee and the ankle, so don't get those confused. Some of the landmarks for the humerus that we'll need to know. This is the head. Think of a bald man's head. And then where there's a head, there's a neck. So we have the anatomical neck. If there's an anatomical neck, we have a surgical neck. This would be where if we had to remove the ball and socket and replace that joint, we would cut it off right here. There is a bit of bone here, a lump of bone protruding for muscular attachment. This is called the greater tubercle of the humerus. And if there's a greater tubercle, well, then we can look for a lesser tubercle, which is slightly lower. And then between the two tubercles, we have a intertubercular sulcus, the sulcus between the two tubercles. Now, I actually prefer the name bicipital groove. And the reason I like bicipital groove is I know if the bicipital tendon is going through here, I know this is probably where my biceps is. And if I know where the bicep is, the bicep muscle, well, then I know that I'm looking at the front. And if I know this is the front and the ball and socket is facing in towards my body this way, here's my body, well, then I know that I probably have a right humerus. There's a large triangular muscle that sits on top of the shoulder, and its tendon runs down along the side of the arm and attaches into this ridge of bone here. Now, that muscle is called the deltoid muscle, so we call that ridge of bone the deltoid tuberosity. If we continue down the humerus, we get this expanded bit of bone down at the distal end. Now we know that when we see knuckles of bone where they ride on other bones, we call those condyles. So this would be the epicondyle, and this is more specifically going to be the lateral epicondyle, and this is the medial epicondyle. Now if someone has inflammation of the muscles on the lateral epicondyle, we'd say that they have lateral epicondylitis, and more commonly we would call that tennis elbow. At the distal end of the humerus, there is a small indentation here, and that's a fossa. That's going to be where uh, bone from the uh, forearm, when we bend our forearm, that bone is going to come up and poke into this little fossa here. And so what we call that fossa, we call that the coronoid fossa, and the um, coronoid process is going to kind of rest inside of that. It just made some room. There are two rounded bits of bone here. This one on the lateral side is called the capitulum. So again, think of a bald man's skull cap. This is the capitulum. And then between these areas here, we have the trochlea. And the ulna is actually going to ride in the trochlear notch here. And that's going to allow our forearm to go up and down while it rotates around that trochlear notch. On the posterior aspect of the humerus, on the distal end, the one thing that we need to take note of is there's another fossa here. And what's going to happen is this is the back of the arm or brachium. So when we straighten out our forearm, our elbow is going to poke in there. And the technical name for the elbow is the olecranon process. So we're going to call that the olecranon fossa.